From the industry uniting against the World Health Organization to Unity embracing the cloud, we have the latest headlines from across the game industry, so let's load them up and dive right in. Sea of Thieves really brought home the booty. The game managed to hit its three-month sales target in its first day, and according to Rare producer Joe Neat, Microsoft's Game Pass was critical to its runaway success. Rare's game was actually the first title to be offered through the subscription service's day one release for first-party titles. And while they didn't disclose any exact figures, it's known that the game had two million players following its first week out in the open. What gave Sea of Thieves and Game Pass a boost going into the game's launch was the service's free 10-day trial, which Joe mentioned had a high conversion rate for folks buying into Game Pass or purchasing the game outright. It's good to see the Sea of Thieves' lukewarm reception during its earlier betas didn't drag their ship down, but a good takeaway for developers is that streaming as a service can raise the tides for you. The World Health Organization looks to be establishing itself as an enemy of the industry. It had been proposed back in January that a gaming disorder be officially recognized, and the notion is being entertained in the latest draft of ICD-11. At this stage, the disorder is an open consultation and will remain there until the WHO General Assembly approves the list next May. The industry is in agreement that such a ruling would create moral panic and possibly lead to abuse of diagnosis, which was a sentiment shared with the organization by the European Games Developer Federation, with support from a whole slew of other trade bodies. The Entertainment Software Association of Canada, the Brazil Union of Video and Games, and Korea Association of Game Industry to name a few. It's believed that the evidence behind this proposal is inconclusive, as was the case in 2013 when this sort of stunt was last attempted. So as long as the industry continues to be vocal about the issue and trust in science remains strong, the idea of recognizing a gaming disorder should be silenced soon enough. Valve is in the headlines for something swell this week. The company has opened a beta for creator homepages, allowing developers and publishers on the platform to customize their own storefront. These pages will feature a display of the host's full portfolio of Steam games. Alongside upcoming releases, their top sellers, discounted titles, and software sorted by genre. Moreover, all the host's social media accounts can be posted and prospective customers can follow the page for notifications on future releases. A few studios like Sega and Telltale Games have already started their own creator home pages, so if you want to know what to expect, you have some references to inspect. Valve says that some bugs still need to be worked out before it can leave beta and be available to the masses, but you can get accustomed to the new feature by following the beta testers today. The Nintendo Switch's piracy exploit appears to be a problem of the past. The company has implemented new anti-piracy measures that enable them to confirm a digital game's legitimacy and permanently ban thieving accounts from their network. When it comes to physical releases, Nintendo has a means of verifying if a game card was authorized by them or not, which solves the header data issues that affected the 3DS. On the digital front, there's unknown and encrypted data in certificates associated with software, which prevents pirates from forging their own tickets and allows Nintendo to identify mismatches with the data for easy banning. So if you have titles heading to the Nintendo Switch, you can rest assured knowing the pirates won't be plundering your sales on the system's storefront. Critical Force has seen a bit of a budget bump. The Finnish mobile developer has managed to raise $6.3 million to expand Critical Ops, a first-person shooter with an eSports audience. The game saw its debut in 2015 and currently has over 40 million downloads, and it spent all this time still in beta. Come this summer, though, the developers plan to have its full launch. The money they were granted came courtesy of the organization Business Finland, and will go into developing and deploying a scalable automated production platform. With millions being injected into the project, the team also plans to build data analysis tools and new server software to flex their status as a number one mobile FPS esports experience. So if you have the good fortune to see millions come your way for an esports style title, take some notes on what Critical Force is doing with their funds and consider it as an option for yourself going forward. For those who aren't acquiring sizable investments, asset flipping might be what helps keep the lights on. The term has a negative connotation, but creative director Brendan Green explained earlier this month that with the length of development on their PUBG map stretching over half a year, relying on the asset store to populate scenes is crucial. Communications lead Ryan Rigney expounded upon that sentiment, sharing that the only way to produce work fast and at a reasonable cost is to take advantage of asset store wares. While they might prompt a few heckles online, there's no shame in leveraging these services to cut down on the time and money it takes to build up models from scratch. So long as you're paying for what you claim, it's good business across the board. Unity and Google are collaborating on multiplayer. The two companies recently announced that they'll be joining forces to produce open source tools that'll support the creation of connected games. The suite in question is planned to include server hosting and matchmaking tools that'll be compatible with Unity and run through Google Cloud. Unity's CEO said that multiplayer games have been on the rise, but they remain one of the most challenging to create and subsequently support. So they're hoping this move will help simplify the process, save developers money, and allow games to reach a global scale. As you might have expected, Unity will be migrating its infrastructure to Google Cloud. So if you're a fan of Google, you'll be pleased to know it'll be more than just your troubleshooting resource now. 
Looks like there's a new publisher ready to read your applications. Digital distributor Libretia has announced plans to enter games publishing, and plans to expand its team in the coming months to tackle the new responsibilities. Their COO, Stefan Layer, thinks they're well situated for the role, citing the company's strong global presence and wide distribution network across multiple portals and digital stores. The company is looking to establish a portfolio of at least six games before the close of the year. So whether you're looking for a publisher or a distributor, Libretia is a company that might be worth adding to your Rolodex. And that covers this week's lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Was there anything you found particularly insightful? Did we miss something you think should have been covered? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to tune in next time for another newsworthy breakdown.